And welcome everybody to another episode of Finn's Nation. We are going behind enemy lines once again. I am your host, Louis Song, and I am joined by a very good friend of mine, Antoine Staley. He has covered the Miami Dolphins. He's currently covering the New York Jets, and he also has history covering the Carolina Panthers, and he does still have a pulse on the team every once in a while. Antoine, always nice to have you on with me, sir. It's good to be with you, too. All righty. So we're going to be talking about Carolina Panthers. Miami Dolphins are going to be facing them in Hard Rock Stadium this upcoming Sunday. And uh, so far, it's looking like, and I don't want to cast dispersions already, but it looks like the Dolphins are well on their way to becoming 5-1 and one for the first time since 2002, which is a painfully long time for any team to find some amount of success but um it comes at the expense of the carolina panthers who from what i can tell seem to be struggling a little bit we'll talk about that in just a little moment but before that really quick just want to go ahead and mention that as always this show is brought to you by prizepicks.com prizepicks.com is the revolutionary fantasy platform where you can now pick up to six different players across professional sports leagues whether that's the nfl the nba the mlb the nhl is back too or you can choose one from every single league at once it's all up to you to decide. Just choose whether your chosen player will get more or less in their projected stat. They give you free squares from time to time, special Taco Tuesday promos. And as you are listening to this, it is Flex Friday, which means that you should go ahead and check it out. They can You will get your money back if you lose, or you could possibly multiply the amount of money you can normally win. So with offers like that, it's hard to justify not signing up if you're any kind of a fantasy sports fan. So use the promo code 5, that's F-I-V-E, and they will match up to $100 on your initial deposit when you sign up. Again, promo code 5 f-i-v-e go to pricepicks.com deposit your 100 dollars, and let price picks give you 100 of their dollars for you to play with and get started winning today all right antoine so i just want to go ahead real quick we'll start with the most obvious thing the quarterback position situation so Obviously, there was a lot of controversy whether the Carolina Panthers wanted to get their hands on C.J. Stroud or whether they wanted Bryce Young. Allegedly, there are reports that the Carolina Panthers wanted C.J. Stroud, or at least the head coach wanted C.J. Stroud, but they ended up getting Bryce Young instead. And so far, it's looking like that Stroud is the better of the two between him and Bryce Young. But I wanted to get your thoughts on this because a lot of the talk about Bryce Young is a lot of the same kind of talk that was about Tua, that his uh, he's not big enough. And to be fair, Bryce Young is only 5'10". He hasn't been having a uh, a spectacular rookie season thus far. And his backup is Andy Dalton, the 35-year-old, 13-year veteran. So the old red rocket, as it were. So he's always got that monkey on his back, basically saying that you better start getting good or you have somebody that can replace you in an instant. So I wanted to get your thoughts on the quarterback position in Carolina. Is Bryce Young not as good as advertised or is there something more to the story here? I think it's I think it's a few things. I think one is just simple because I mean sometimes you know despite the success he had at Alabama and everything around him, like you come to a team like the Panthers that you know you really don't have a wide receiver. You got rid of DJ Moore, uh, the trade for Bryce Young, and then you know the offensive line isn't very good, and you're also you know you're dealing with a running rushing attack and Miles Sanders that hasn't necessarily lived up the expectations. So. Yeah, I mean, you're dealing with a team that's just complete. That's not a good team right now. And then you got a first year, even though it's not Frank Wright's first year as a head coach, but first year cover, like coaching the Panthers. You know, you get all that recipe is just you know been disastrous so far. And then they're trying to give him a whole lot, from what I understand, as far as the offense. They're talking about scaling things back too for him. Uh, we'll see if that works for him. But yeah, I think ultimately, sometimes you know it might be better for some guys to get thrown in the fire, like C.J. Stroud's been on fire for the Texans it might have been better for Bryce Young to maybe take a step back and you know just watch for a little bit especially considering how poor the team is as far as from a talent perspective offensively when you don't have guys that can separate from cornerbacks and you know in the defense too as well so yeah I definitely think it's a perfect storm for the Panthers but you know I, I don't think I think Bryce Young's gonna be fine it's just you know you have sometimes you just have to get some players time to develop and you know get them some weapons around them and that's something that the Panthers just hadn't been able to do so far and that's something that Miami Dolphins fans are well acquainted with Tua was not given the opportunity early on he had a head coach who didn't believe in him he was not given very much to work with early on like one of his main weapons was Malcolm Perry and Lynn Bowden Jr. for God's sake so that's not exactly a a, a very I, much I mind you I liked Malcolm Perry I really did I I, I did too I, I had a I had a soft spot for him coming out of the Navy so yeah I did too like I thought he was a you know tremendous athlete but obviously you know, not near the talent that they have now. But yeah. yeah, I mean, you like him as just a talent there. But yeah, definitely needed to be an upgrade there. 
Yeah, and and just the fact of it though, like there was no belief from the ground up f- f- with for, with Brian Flores. The the Deshaun Watson rumors were constantly swirling around, and uh, I, I don't think the Cleveland Browns are particularly happy with the decision they made, and I don't think the Dolphins would have been either. I don't know what it was about Deshaun Watson. Maybe the lack of massages is messing with his mojo. I don't know, but well, well, I, I'll say this: like at one point in time, he was a top, you know, ten. Yeah, yeah once upon a time, time absolutely. For uh, you know, obviously him sitting out and everything like that, and then since he set out, then he just hasn't been the same guy. He just hasn't been the same guy, and then now he's you know has the injury there in Cleveland. But I thought it was just ridiculous to give him that give just about any quarterback, not Patrick Mahomes or maybe Joe Burrow, that much money. To be quite honest with you, fully guaranteed contract. Yeah, only like I said, the only player I would have done that with Mahomes would be Mahomes. To be quite honest with you, so not even Josh Allen falls in that for you. No, 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 I like Josh Allen. Like I've been a Josh Allen like defender like since his rookie year. And Josh Allen like, loves playing the Dolphins. Like yeah, with a burning like, passion, he loves playing Miami. Yeah, I think he's one of the second or third best quarterbacks of football. But no, I, I don't like the only one I get Mahomes because you know you're getting what what you get with Mahomes. Like you're contending for a Super Bowl every year. He is arguably the best player in football. And then I think you can justify giving somebody like him a fully guaranteed contract. Yeah. So now you have Bryce Young, who is struggling in Carolina. He's got so he's got names. That's the, th- the funny thing is that he has names that people would recognize. They're just not necessarily good names. Adam Thielen, who's 33, 10-year veteran. He, he He's not the same guy he used to be before. Levi- he's a possession guy, though. Yeah. Like, good possession he's- guy, but he's not going to burn anybody. Exactly. Anybody. LaVisca Chenault Jr. I mean, that's, that's a guy who hasn't lived up to expectations. He's trying to revive his career, so to speak. Uh, DJ Chark Jr. Like, yeah, yeah, eh, you know, it, it's okay. not... I, I I think he'd be wide receiver three on the Dolphins. So think of that. Maybe, maybe, maybe yeah. Maybe, <laughs> not even beating Braxton Berrios. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I think he's a, you know, serviceable guy. They got a lot of serviceable guys. They need somebody that's a bona fide. Nobody scares you on that offense, really. I think that's the part of what the Panthers. I mean, maybe Miles Sanders, but you're looking at, you know, the Eagles let him go, you know, despite all the success that they had. And then they end up getting uh, DeAndre Swift and, you know, Swift's doing just as good of a job, if not better than what Sanders did last year. Yeah. And uh, I mean, there are some decent tight ends on there. Hayden Hurst is obviously a name that people recognize. I think Ian Thomas is better than people give him credit for. So there's that one as well. Good inline blocker, but and I don't know his receiver threat. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah but was, yeah. well, you know what? You wouldn't think of Durham Smythe as a receiver threat, and yet Tua likes to throw to him too. So I actually liked him. I just thought that he wasn't. Well, I mean, when they drafted him, I was still covering the Dolphins, and then uh, I just think they relied mostly on his blocking in, uh, in line. But I thought he was a solid receiver at Notre Dame. He's just slow. That's all. Yeah, exactly. That's basically he, what it he is. lumbers he across the field. He can catch the ball. He just lumbers. That's all. Yeah, exactly. So don't ask him to run downfield and sprint. That's all. It's not going to work. So <laughs> Jonathan Mingo was the big rookie uh, yes. phenom out of Mississippi. That was the guy that the Panthers, I guess, were counting on to be a top weapon. How's that going for them so far? Very raw talent. I think it's unfair to ask somebody like him to come in and just produce like right away. I mean, it's hard for any rookie wide receiver to come in and just, you know, unless you're like Jamar Chase or something like that, when you have a veteran, well, not even a veteran, but a guy like a Joe Burrow to come in there and just throw balls to who he had chemistry with. Yeah. He's your buddy at LSU. But yeah, I think it's very difficult to come in right away and produce as a rookie, especially with a guy like, you know, Mingo that's, you know, like I say, I, I liked him as a talent at Ole Miss, but I just thought he was, he has a lot more development to do. So I think, you know, I think it's hard, you know, especially when you, again, you got rid of DJ, DJ Moore, and then now you're asking a guy like that who was drafted in the second round to come in and essentially take over his spot. And I, again, I don't think that's necessarily fair to them. I think, you know, you have a guy like Thielen who, you know, again, a good serviceable guy, good guy can move the chains there, but they need a threat. And I don't think they necessarily have that right now. And I think that was part of the problem that the, uh, the New York Giants had as well when they faced the Dolphins. They didn't really have anybody that you could look at yes. and say, this is the guy that is going to be able right. to put some pressure same on thing. the Dolphins' defense. Yeah, it's the same, exact same thing. Giants having that issue too. And oh, to uh, compound issues, like no Saquon there, you end up Daniel Jones is getting hurt. And their offensive line is, you know, quite frankly, I'm trying to think of, a nice word to say, but just, just they're just not good. They're just not a you know not a good offensive line, and then you're missing Andrew Thomas, your left tackle. So 
yeah, you have all those issues there, and that's why you're leading the league and you know, sets allow if the Giants are. Yeah, and now you have here, we have the Panthers, who I don't recognize anybody on this list as somebody that I would rec- uh, remember as far as their offensive line. Like, I'm going to just look really quickly at their depth chart here. So their left tackle, Ikem Ikonwu, I hope I said that right. I'd probably... Icky. Like, Icky. Icky? Okay, I can... Yeah, Icky's in Icky Quato. Like, he, he was... Um, he was in the draft where, um, like a few years ago, like I know the Jets were considering drafting him too. But yeah, he was uh, highly talented too as well. Uh, I like, I like, I actually like Icky, but you know he's still trying to develop too. But yeah, he's he's a solid, he's a solid left tackle. Okay, so he's good. Uh, Chandler yeah. Zavala at left guard. Don't know anything about him. Never heard of him before. Um, Bradley Bozeman. The name sounds familiar. Bozeman. Yeah, Bozeman is solid. Yeah. Okay. Calvin Throckmorton, another name I kind of recognize, but I don't know much about him. So, and then Taylor Moten at Moton. Moten, yeah. Moten's Moten. Moten's a veteran. Yeah, like Moton's been there for a little while. So yeah, he's another solid. I mean, it's not it's not the greatest offensive line. They've had some issues there. I remember seeing them uh, the joint practice when they had uh, they were against the Jets and. The Jets defensive line was, especially the preseason game, was just having their way. So I imagine, uh, especially with the scheme that Vic Fangio likes to run too, going to use some, probably use some blitzes too as times. Yeah, I mean, you can you can get some move, you can get past those guys really. Uh, but, to be it, honest with you. but it's not going to be quite as uh, dominant as it was against the Giants, like all backups offensive no, line. No, 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 I don't, I don't think so. No, their their offensive line is, isn't nearly as bad. But it's still it's still some question marks on the line too. It's still some leaky spots. But yeah, it's not as you know. Again, I'm trying to think of a nice. It's not as bad as the Giants' offensive line. Put it that way. <laughs> I mean that that's the problem. That's probably the lowest bar you could set right now. Poor Giants. Like even when they were starting, they weren't good, and then uh, now they have all backups, and it's like and I, then, I get yeah. And now you you're, you're missing your left tackle, so yeah, it definitely hurts too, especially when you're playing these teams that have really good pass rushers. Yeah. Well, now the funny thing is that the Dolphins have not had that much success with pass rushing, aside from Andrew Van Ginkle, who, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, that guy. I I don't think we've I think we've said so much about Andrew Van Ginkle over the past couple of weeks now on Finns Nation, Pulse of Finns Nation and everything. Andrew Van Ginkle's going to get paid. I don't know who I who. He's going to get paid by somebody. It might not be Miami, but he's going to get paid by somebody. This guy can flat out rush the passer. So Yeah, he reminds me like just covering the Jets. Like he is like equivalent of, like with the Jets with Bryce Huff. Like those guys like they don't get a lot of opportunities, but when they do, they just seem to always get to the quarterback for whatever reason. So with him, it's like Whatever he's in there, man, he's just – you always see him. Like, he's around the ball. Like, he's making these plays. And it, like you said, like, he may not get paid by the Dolphins just simply because they would like to keep him, I imagine. But, you know, it's going to be other teams that, one, could provide more playing time for him. And, two, you know – More money. More money. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, money. <laughs> like, how are you going to – Like, you can't you have can't a guy – You can't pay everybody. Yeah, you can't pay everybody. And the Dolphins have a lot of people to pay. But I want to talk about a little bit about the, uh, the, the Panthers' defense now. So, obviously – Dolphins, as of right now, anyway, have the historically most prolific offense in NFL history. That is not hyperbole. That is literally statistics at this point. Has more yards, more touchdowns, more everything than any other team in the than that has ever played in the NFL. Like that's something that they even talked about through five on, games. Yeah, well, through five games. Yes, as that's why. Yes. As of this moment, it yes. can change. There can be like a yes. whole utter sh- breakdown. I just thought I wanted to preface that too. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, but. I, I wanted to ask you about this Panthers defense because there's a lot of names on here that I kind of rem- I recognize here. Brian Burns as an outside linebacker, so he's a good pass rusher. We know this. He's got some yeah. he's got some chops there. Uh, Kamu Gruger Hill, I remember him from uh, Dolphins uh, Dolphins faithful. He was a backup for Miami though. It looks like he's starting for uh, the Panthers, so that's interesting. right now. Yes, I remember, remember Shaq Thompson is missing time too. So yeah, that okay. really hurts. Uh, the Panthers defense right now. So is so, that yeah, why was, is that why was, Cage is yeah. that why Gruger Hill is playing? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So that that really hurts their depth at the linebacker position. All right, and I also see uh, Xavier Woods a safety along with Von Bell. You got uh, C.J. Henderson, who uh, C.J. Henderson was a highly touted guy coming out of yeah. college as well. That no, uh, uh, no horn to either as well. So yeah, that really hurts them too. The Panthers had some. Yeah, they have players on the defense, but they they have some injuries right now to try to overcome. So yeah, J.C. Horn was definitely a big loss there. When he plays, he's really good, but he's been injury prone throughout the his tenure. Yeah. 
So I, the way that I wanted to phrase this, how if you were the Dolphins, def, if, excuse me, if you were the Panthers' defensive coordinator, how I, I, I'm, it's, we find it amusing because Wink Martindale went on the press conference and said, "How are you oh, yeah. dealing with uh, de- uh, figuring out how to stop the Dolphins' offense?" He's like, "He's sleeping like a baby. I wake up, I cry, I go to the bathroom, and I go back to sleep." But it's like, so if you were the defensive coordinator now for the Panthers, what's your plan of attack to try to stop this Dolphins' offense, or are you just kind of like, "I wash my hands of it. Forget it. You're on your own." Yeah, uh, I'd I be praying, first of all, <laughs> but um, uh, all joking aside, I, I think, you know, you can't play man to man because they're just so quick. They, I mean, there's no way to do that. And then especially when you have a lot of injuries on, to your defense. And uh, like I said, I talked about Shad Tosh. We talked about J.C. Horn as well. Um, basically, uh, try to move Brian Burns around, uh, try to get, you know, get him to you know create some pressure, make Tua uncomfortable, get in his face. If you can do that, you know, we kind of saw last week where, you know, he made, you know, whatever you, whatever you think about Tua and, you know, I think he's a tremendous quarterback. He made some bad decisions at times last week. And, you know, if you can able, if you're able to do that, you know, force some throws there, get some pressure, you know, that's your best plan of attack because if he, you know, he gets the ball up in the air and especially those playmakers that they have and Hill and Waddle and, you know, all of Moster, you know, running the football there, then it's going to be trouble and you're not going to be able to stop that. So, yeah, I definitely think, you know, maybe to get past, get rushed, you know, early on and downs there for some in third and long situations. That's basically, that's basically your only hope of trying to slow down the, the, the Dolphins, especially in a team like the uh, Panthers that really doesn't have a, you know, good defense. Right. So now, obviously the other thing about it is that if you are, if you're the Panthers, you're probably thinking we're going to, we may have to get into a shootout with these guys. So obviously the, the Dolphins defense has not has been nearly as, prolific as the Dolphins offense has been we've been kind of giving Vic Fangio the side eye for a couple of weeks now being like you're supposed to be the guru what's going well, on well hold on man like, I don't think that's necessarily fair to him I think you know it's gonna take time like people don't want to wait it like anymore like you have to understand like you, you're missing you know obviously Ramsey's not there too I mean it, it's gonna take some time for people for you know scheme and people to you know, start to, you know, excel at it. So no, I, get I, I don't that. know. No, Antoine, I get that though. But it's like, when you hype yourself up to the point where it's like, we keep talking, it's not like this is Vic Fangio's like son-in-law. This is the guy, the guy who redefined what NFL defenses was supposed to be. So when you is, walk in Is here, he saying that? No. Is no, he, he saying did, that? Did he say that? No, every, that's true. No, he did not specifically say that, but it's no secret that everybody looks at Vic Fangio's style and everybody's been trying to copy it. Sean Desai for the Eagles. They're like even Brandon Staley himself for the Chargers trying his best to copy it and maybe add a few tweaks here and there to make it his own, but it's still basically Fangio's scheme. And so you would expect a guy who is considered the best defensive coordinator in football, at least one of, if not the best, you would say, okay, so you're the guy who's going to take all this talent that the Dolphins have. I understand Jalen Ramsey's not in. I get that. And I, I, folks, I'm sorry we're not talking about Panthers right now. This is Dolphins stuff. We're talking Dolphins right now because Antoine's a good Dolphins dude as well. We understand that Jalen Ramsey's not in. We get it. But he still have Xavier Howard. Yeah, he's a little older. He's not the same superstar he once was, but he can still cover Cater Co, who's no scrub. Stephon Diggs made him look like one, but Stephon Diggs does that to everybody. Even Jalen Ramsey yeah, didn't look good against Stephon Diggs. So yeah, he's one of the best receivers in football. So, so that's that's, no, no that's normal. That. That's no that's yeah. normal. So and the Dolphins have talent on that side of the ball. You obviously have Christian Wilkins, Zach Sealer stuffing up the middle. You obviously now Bradley Chubb's not living up to expectations, so that's not great. But he's still decent and Jalen Phillips when he's healthy can rush the passer the only oh, one yeah. the only thing that I'm looking at the Dolphins I'm looking at like okay there's not a whole lot of talent there would be Jerome Baker and maybe David Long's not living up to expectations so far although to be perfectly fair I wasn't sure what to expect from him I did not know a lot about him before he got here so but even then I'll say this too for me like not to interrupt you like I think there's safeties like the spot like like I like Holland I think he's you know really good talent I just don't think they're playing you know up to par at times too like I don't I don't know what your assessment is like you know you watch more of the Dolphins than I do although I, I watch a lot of their games especially like in the replays like at, at the I cover Jets games but yeah it just seems like at times like the safe like the second safety position has been a little spotty there and yeah I give here's the thing about Fangio too like I will give him you know I will give him some criticism for not putting X on you know digs when they were playing the Bills too that was you know 
that was not good. That was, that was one of the, <laughs> biggest, not that, that was one that of was the biggest practice. things we were mad about him for. It was like, yeah. why are you letting Cater Kohu get exposed over and over and over again yeah. instead of putting... And Xavier and Howard even came out and said, I wanted to cover Stephon Diggs, and that wasn't the game plan chosen. I'm like, ooh. So, well, why, though? <laughs> That's the question. Yeah. Why? That, that I don't understand because, yeah, you got a veteran there. I mean, even if you don't, don't travel, don't let the cornerback travel, you still have a Xavier and Howard on dates like half the time. So you're still having them on there. And it, so, yeah, I don't understand. I didn't understand what the game plan there was. Yeah, that, that was a very big question mark. But in any case, um, I, I'm hoping that the, if you're so now we'll go back to Panthers. If you are the Panthers offense, you have Miles Sanders, you have these these decent possession guys who are your wide receivers. You do have guys like Hayden Hurst and Ian Thomas as your tight ends. They're good. They're good players. If you're going to try to pick apart this Dolphins defense, what's your game plan to try to keep up with the Dolphins offense? Probably some 12 personnel, probably uh, trying to get Miles Sanders out in some space too. maybe use some screens there, try to get the run game going, maybe some short passes there, try to get, you know, Bryce Young some rhythm. Like, I just think that, you know, I think, you know, in football, we don't talk about quarterbacks getting rhythm like as much like you do in, you know, baseball, especially in basketball, where you got a shooter that's, you know, granting some rhythm there. I mean, quarterbacks can get rhythm, too. You just have to, you know, call plays for them that's able to be able to get them, you know, a little bit rhythm and some com- like comfortability throughout the course of games. And I think with a guy that's not playing well, you know, obviously for a variety of reasons, like do things that he likes to do, like find the place that he feels comfortable with. And, you know, I think getting the short game, passing game, you know, getting some, you know, quick passes out, you know, whether it be the Thielen there or you talked about Thomas there or Aiden Hurst there, also Miles Sanders. I think that's the best form of attack too and try to negate, you know, what I think is going to be, you know, a heavy pass rush from the Dolphins on Sunday. I'm you have more faith in the Dolphins pass rush than a lot of Dolphins fans. Do. I, I think it, this for this game. Yes. Like <laughs> I think for this game. Yeah. I think you can see it, you know, take off a little bit. Like I'm not saying for the whole season, but you know, this particular game. Yeah. Cause what I've seen or what I haven't seen from the Panthers offensive line. All right. Fair enough. So uh, now we're going to get ready to wrap it up here, but I wanted to do this real quick. I always do this at the end of every uh, prediction part. I, I call it a uh, zero and hero. So, Basically, all we're going to do is we're going to say who's your uh, who's your zero, who's going to be the guy that doesn't do as much as we're as you're hoping he does. Who's your hero? Who's the guy who's going to be like the X factor of the game and who what's the final score? So I'll go ahead and let you go first for the Panthers. Who's your zero and your hero? And give me your score prediction. Uh, zero. Like, uh, I probably would have to go with, uh, Miles Sanders. Like, I don't think he's going to have, I mean, he's really, like I say, he really hadn't had been much of a factor for the Panthers this year. Like they, they expect him to be, he got paid more than any other running back in free agency. So, you know, I think he's been in uh, like a bit, a bit disappointment. So I would probably say that And hero, I think if they have any chance of winning this game, it has to be Brian Burns. Like, and even then, even if they don't win, I still think he'll be a factor some way, somehow, because the man's trying to get paid. So and he's looking to get paid and he's back home. Like he's back in his hometown. He grew up in Fort Lauderdale, obviously with the Florida State. He's I'm sure he's gonna have a lot of family there. I imagine he's gonna have a pretty solid game there. And final score, uh probably say Dolphins thirty eight, Panthers uh seventeen. Oof. Okay. <laughs> Well, we'll uh, we'll see if that prediction comes to pass. My uh, and my score is gonna my zero and hero for the Dolphins side. Uh, I'm I always make this joke on Pulse of Nation. It's like I'm probably not gonna pick the same guy more than once because I keep forgetting. Like my my picks evolve as time goes on. Uh, I I think I made my zero and I'm gonna stick with it. I think my zero was gonna be Jalen Waddle. I just he hasn't been involved in this offense. He really hasn't. Anytime Tua throws the football, it's been Tyreek Hill. He's found Braxton Berrios. He's found Durham Smythe. He finds Raheem Mostert and Devon Achon out of the backfield. Now Achon's not gonna be there, so he'll still look for Raheem Mostert. Maybe he'll find Savon Ahmed a few times, but I just don't think Jalen Waddle's going to be that involved he, he he that was part of the reason why Tua was making such poor mistakes so that he was trying to force the ball to Jalen Waddle I think he feels bad like this, his his buddy from Alabama is like not getting to catch any footballs so he's like I'm just gonna try to throw this in there just to see if I can get his pat his stat sheet a little bit so I don't think that Jalen Waddle is going to be much of a factor in this game I think it's just going to be more uh Tua to Tyreek for 60 yard bombs down the field um my hero for this game 
and I'm gonna go ahead and say it. I think it is going to actually be Tua. I mean, it's 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 uh I guess it's cliche to say, oh, the quarterback is your hero, but I feel like after last game where he had like a for him anyway, he had a bad game. Like you, it's kind of it's kind of wild. Two touchdowns, 300 yards were passing. That's considered a bad game for Tua. So I feel like though after the game that he had against the Giants, where it felt like he was just not sharp, he wasn't he wasn't on his he wasn't on his mark. I think that two is going to find himself getting into a rhythm. I think he's going to make one less mistake than usual. He, he's always good for one. You have to understand when it comes to two, he's always good for one. He's always going to make one throw that you're like, what was I looking at just now? But <laughs> once he does, once he gets that out of the way, he's fine. So I'm going to go ahead and say Tua has himself a fantastic game, like 350 yards, maybe three touchdowns passing. And I think the Dolphins ultimately win that game. I think it's going to be something along the lines of uh, 31 to 17. Yeah, that sounds fair. Like I had, I had thirty-eight, seventeen. So, so you gave yeah, up one more touchdown time. than I did. Basically, yeah. <laughs> exactly. I, I, I tend to be more conservative with my picks, just because it's like, oh well, you know, you can't expect the Dolphins to just like put up Broncos level numbers every single game. <laughs> well, well, that's why I didn't put forty. That's why I was like, yeah, they're probably not going to put forty points up. But yeah, but they could. But yeah, no, they, listen, if the Dolphins were completely on point like they were against the Broncos, they could. They really could put up well, seventy yeah. every single game. But that's how fast they can score. But I sincerely doubt that they're ever going to be that perfect again. There's no way. There's yeah, that, that's no way. just like unheard of, like amount of scoring. Like that was insane. Yeah, the, the Broncos basically gave up. That's why they were able to score so easily at that point. So yeah, I remember. I remember we were talking about in the uh, watching the Jets game that day. We we're just like, what? Like seventy point? Like what? Like it just it just could. It was kind of like you, the stuff you see in college. Like I watch a lot. Of, I watch a lot of college football. Is seventy yeah. points something that happens a lot in college? No, it doesn't necessarily. Happen, but I've seen it. I've seen eighty points in college. But eighty. You know, yeah, I've seen eighty. But yeah, this is that. That is like NFL. Like you say, you just never seen anything like that. At least not in my time, anyway. I'll say this, man. Listen, even just speaking strictly from a college standpoint, I'm not a college football person. I never have been. I never claim to be. I never will. But if any team ever scored 80, I would think the rest of the week, there's just call off practice for the losing team when they're just going to go to like the school therapist. <laughs> it's like you've, you've, you've <laughs> just been toasted over and over again. It's well, like, just keep in mind, some of these teams, like they – they have to pay teams to play them. Like they give money, so you got these bad schools that are coming in. Is that how that works? Paycheck. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So yeah. if so, so if some team out there in the middle of nowhere wanted to play Alabama, they'll give Alabama money to say, "Come play us." Well, no, no, no. Alabama would give them money to come play them because they know they're going to get their butt kicked. So, like when the University of Miami, like the Hurricanes, okay. like they'll, they'll play like Bethune Cookman or Florida A and M. Like teams that are like a lower division than them, they'll cut Miami or cut the check for them. Like it could be like you know five hundred thousand, it could be a million, whatever. And then they'll come, typically take a butt whipping, and then you know go about the business. But they got paid. That's wild. I did not yeah. know that, like, how that worked. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Dynamics of college sports, man. Like, like, because for them, like, you know, a million dollars could pay for so many, you know, programs like at their school. So, yeah, they, they'll come get beat down and guess what? They'll get a nice check out of it. That's crazy. Wow. I did not know that's how that works. But yeah. It's like, hey, Denver Broncos, we're going to go. We're going to pay you to come and get your butt kicked again. Like, let, let yeah. us score 70 again. Yeah, that's why it's so wild that it happened like in pros because you don't see it like that because everybody's typically on the same level. And as bad as the Broncos are, and I saw them last weekend against the Jets, they're they're not a good team. Although Russell Wilson, I think, is improved, but still giving up seventy points as well. Wow. Okay. So yeah, great Panther show as we talk about college football and the Broncos. Listen, See, that's what you get from me. Like I'm all over I, the place. I, I, no, I, I, appre- I always appreciate you, man. I always appreciate you, but it's like I, I, I you, you, you completely threw me off with that. Oh, teams get paid to come and get whooped. I'm like, what? Yeah. The freaking what? Did somebody yeah. cash a check to the Broncos to let the Dolphins do what they did? <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, man. It's wow. That's that's incredible. Okay, so 
everybody thank you all so much for joining us i really appreciate you listening antoine i appreciate you taking some time out of your busy day to come and talk to me so always a pleasure to speak to you man all right, thank you, man. All right. And for those of you who have not already done so, once again, go to pricepicks.com. Use that promo code FIVE, that's F-I-V-E, and they will match up to $100 on your initial deposit when you sign up. It is Flex Friday. Make sure you're taking advantage of it. Go try to win big. You bet up to $20. If you lose, they give you the $20 back. You can't get any better than that. So, again, promo code FIVE, F-I-V-E, pricepicks.com. We will see you all next week for more episodes of Finns Nation.